Okay. <clears throat> Next up, uh, just a heads up, I, I switched my camera view back to perspective, um, and it's back at lens length of 50. Um, we're going to switch gears here for a little bit and move away from the actual camera because you kind of have all the functionality that I think you're going to need for at least a while now. Um, but the, the thing that I want to talk to you a little bit more now is this idea of display. So I showed you real briefly, I showed you the rendered view, which is this, and the rendered view, oh, whoops. You guys got a little preview here or something. Boom. All right. So the rendered view is, and it's going to look funky now because I have this stuff in the way. Let me move this stuff farther away. There we go. The rendered view is basically just borrowing a sun position that it's preloaded, and it also doesn't move with the view, uh, with the camera position. Um, at all. So basically, if I move this down, then the sun angle is changing as well. You can see that. So basically, my camera is in relation to the sun is in the same position. And as the camera moves, so too does the sun. The sun is not a real position in this in this view. Um, but what I want you to begin to explore and um, with your with your design process is more the transparency than it is the sun shading. We'll we'll establish a sun position and proper shading and stuff a little bit later down the road, but I do want you to begin flipping around your model and seeing what transparencies can look like in certain lighting conditions. So in order to do that, um, you can change the Obviously, you can change the entire view to what's called a ghosted view, and that's this one right here. And you can kind of see through your geometry a little bit, um, and that can make the design process really smooth. In fact, a lot of people that are great at Rhino love working in the ghosted viewport. Um, I only do sometimes, but um, you can also, um, back into the rendered viewport, oh darn. Um, but you can also simulate part of what your rendering is going to look like by loading in or preloading or presetting some of the transparencies that you're going to have on your objects. So for instance, this one right here, um, the properties menu, right? So we've got kind of a bunch of layers here. We have uh, this whole menu here, I think is called, I think these are all separate windows to be honest. Yeah, they're all separate windows. Um, so anyway, the properties menu has is a tab that shows up over here on the UI as a standard. You can move it wherever you want. I don't care. But the properties tab has submenus that you see here, these little buttons. Those are extra settings that you don't normally see when you have properties up like this. So when the object is selected and you have this object button turned on, that's where you see what layer it's on, what type of object it is, in some cases where it is, um, some other features that we'll get to when we need to. But what I want you to look at is the material menu or submenu or button, whatever you want to call it. Um, this right now says assign material by and by layer. Um, but you can override that and switch it to object. Now, I'm, I want to give you guys a bit of a uh, um, disclaimer about that that says, yes. You're recording this. Right? Yes, I am. Okay. Thank you. Um, I want to give you a disclaimer about object overrides and just let you know that uh, when we apply materials using our methods later, it's usually not a best practice, but in the earlier part of your design stages, you can use this. Uh, if you switch it to object and you go and change your transparency, which is right down here under basic settings, you can actually increase your transparency and start to explore, like if you have 80% translucent items, you can explore what that really looks like. Object 80. 
okay? So it just gives you a way of measuring the translucency of the overall condition. I can switch these two. I, I don't recall what all of my settings were, but um, I think there was a 50%, something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> and then this one right here, we can make that one to 20. I didn't have any opaque ones in my settings. Um, no. no, I didn't have any opaque. All right, I might, I might have to. Uh, Yeah, Those were colors. One of your planes was 100% opacity. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, so we'll leave this one the way it was. So um, that's a that's a very good point here. Um, I wrote I wrote 100% um, opacity, but this setting says transparency. They're opposites. Okay, so opacity is how opaque is it? Basically, how little light does it let through? And transparency is how much light does it let through? Let through. So 100% opacity is 0% transparency. Okay, just giving you a point of clarification there. Okay, so um, that is a possibility, but be aware that when you do that, this object can no longer be assigned a material by the layer properties. So when I go back into layers, you, you can see here that there's this row for material. Um, I can actually apply materials to an entire layer. So use this a little bit for your design process, but before you actually apply real materials and real settings, you might wanna just select everything Go to properties, go to material, and switch it back to layer. And it's going to turn all that off. Is there a way like, to keep track of like, how you change the opacity to transparency? Um, is there a way to track how you change it? Uh, define how you would like to track it, and I might be able well, to tell like you. If you, like if you chose, chose like, one plane and you of which ones you've modified? Yeah. Uh, you would just select it and then go into this menu and see whether or not it's set to layer or if it's set to object. So they, most of, all of your materials, um, when you create geometry, I think, will default to being set to its layer. So if it's been custom modified, then it'll be set to something else. Does that answer your question? Any other questions about transparencies? Or I should say translucencies? In terms of terminology, guys, translucency is anywhere on the gradient between opaque and transparent. OK. I'm going to stop this one real quick, and then um, we'll move on to some more.